Es el momento en el que contaremos con la participación de Magil Braxma. Uh, Magil uh, is one of the illustrators in our exhibition, Illustramundos. He comes from Friesland, the northern region in the Netherlands. Um, it's a Chinese community, a cultural community with um, their identity, they speak um, Frisian, yes. um, a linguistic uh, a, a language, and this identity is very important for McGill, mm -hmm. uh, the conception of his work, his illustration is, uh, has a special relationship with his identity and his language. In fact, uh, he uh, um, introduce a relationship between creation and uh, language. Also. 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 Mm -hmm. So, um, and also we need to, to talk about the, the special kind of illustration. He's developing a new concept, very, very special and very, um, very important in this uh, exhibition because it's also uh, a new concept. The um, conference, the plenary conference, McGill Braxma will present uh, is titled Rearrange a Different Way of Illustration. Please. Yes, okay. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm really enjoying myself here in San Diego meeting uh, lots of uh, very nice people, students, and of course, uh, I've seen uh, many beautiful pictures on uh, the conference, so maybe I consider uh, immigrating to Santiago. <laughs> You'll never know. You're well, welcome. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, good morning. As uh, José said, my name is Magil Braxma. And uh, I'm from Friesland, the north part of the Netherlands. That's the upper part, you know. What you have here this morning is an illustrator and a monkey. To avoid that you will mix us up, I'm the illustrator <laughs> and he's the monkey. He's my assistant and his name is Hotze. Hotze. Hotze is a name that is only being used in Friesland. And even there it's quite a rare name. The chances of having a second Hotze here in the audience are one at a billion, I guess. So I expect no one in the audience will be offended by this name. I would like to explain a little about myself and the way of working. Perhaps you'll find it interesting to see illustration from the point of view of someone having an artist background making sculptures. But first of all, I want to show you some important ingredients regarding illustration. An apple and a duster to clean. We will get back later on these ingredients. So, I started working as an artist, making sculptures, and now I'm also an illustrator and writer. My sculptures are composed of different materials that most people are familiar with. This aquarium, it's a different one than you'll see at the exhibition. This aquarium is made of all kinds of stuff. For instance, some plastic bottles and little plastic forks. This is a secretary bird, sorry, secretary bird made of spoons, a hair comb 
and on the head you see some black parts from spectacles. Almost the same like my own spectacles. You can see those small legs on the side. Hotze is made of ropes, fishing nets and a plastic shuffle. All stuff that is found on the beach in my home country. The identity of the ropes and nets changed into something new. Here it acts like hair and skin. And the scoop part of the red shuffle, not visible in the picture, became a typical baboon behind. This way of rearranging material and transforming has become characteristic for my style of illustration later on. Sculptures like this caught the attention of some schools and this resulted in doing workshop, workshops for children to make things together. Excuse me. Therefore, some simple examples of animal sculptures were made using stuff with little value. Here are some simple snapshots. It's really not a very good picture, but later on it, it's, get, uh, it's getting better, I promise. These examples were not meant to be copied, but to stimulate and encourage children to make something unexpected. This collection of examples became more and more because I became grasped by it myself and just couldn't stop. The next step was the thought of making a book with nice pictures. So a local publisher was approached with a selection of pictures. He told me that publishing was not possible unless he would ask a writer to make stories to go along with it. So I asked if I could try it myself first. I had written some short stories for my son, who is dyslectic, so he could practice reading more. And he is very much interested in animals. That's how finally the book Animals Are Everywhere was realized. The title means that in every common daily used object, an animal can be hidden. So therefore, the animals are everywhere. Because of this thought of the possibility to use anything that you see, or examine every object, tool, tool or thing, suddenly the whole world changes into a large warehouse. You look with different eyes at things you thought you knew so well. When you forget about their original function, they reveal other qualities. In Spanish this is called an irijo, something. Thank you. Children and adults analyze this animal automatically because they recognize parts and therefore they become involved immediately. The making of small sculptures or objects is the starting point for my illustrations. There's an interesting difference between using a sculpture in an exhibition and using a sculpture to act in an illustration. The wonderful thing about making an exhibition or making an illustration is that one can be 
some sort of conductor or director. With a sculpture like Hudson, the space of the exhibition room is your window or frame. You can adjust the attention to the monkey by giving him a prominent place or not. Or reduce the attention a little, for instance, by putting another sculpture near it with the same size. There are different ways to influence the situations. One can put lights on sculptures to actuate, to accentuate things. I will give another example of Hotze. Oh, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. With an exhibition, you also can create an invisible walking route just by leaving walking space on the floor, which directs people automatically from one sculpture to the next one. People can walk around the sculpture and see and create different angles. Seen from the front, Hotz's expression is maybe a little angry or suspicious. He doesn't seem very cooperative. But still, he's sitting here silently and taking it all in of what is going on over here. He looks involved with us and has clearly his own opinion. But if he gets turned around a little, with his back to the audience, one could describe him as demonstrative, disagreeing, or uninteresting. <laughs> like that, I think. In an illustration on paper, the angle is frozen and decided. You can't walk around your object. But this frame of illustration is not a restriction, I think. It challenges one to organize something over some square inches or centimeters. And even better, you can eliminate distracting things. Your frame can isolate things and make the illustrations more intense by this isolation. In an exhibition, you can't remove a distracting door, for instance, or make the ceiling a little higher. So the focus is different. To me, one of the greatest things about illustrations in books is that you constantly can take care of little surprises. You can define an order in what to show first and last, or how much you want to show of it. To me, the turning of pages is a great invention. By turning pages, one can accomplish small re revealings. At first, you see how the animals were presented in a picture. The centipede is placed in a landscape made of trash, which in fact is my working table. <laughs> it is, so to speak, his place, place of birth. The fly was put in a sunny environment 
with playful shadows of a window. And the mosquito has a landing spot of his own, like a helicopter. I've translated the story which goes by this animal in English. Air Force. Today there's a lot of action in the air. The two pilots, Dirk and Hannes, are very busy. Summer has begun and there are things to be done. Hannes, are you still on the ground? Roger, Dirk, I am. Two arms with rolled up sleeves are trying to escape. I'm on my way, tell me the position. Roger, I'm on it. One or two stings. Two times. This one is really miserable. Okay, Roger, I'll be right back. Over and out. Ouch, darn, I got stung. In the book, Animals Are Everywhere, Turning Pages plays a special role. Between each story on the left and illustration on the right, there is a trans transparent leaf. This leaf represents a part of the story in action. This transparent leaf suggests a transparent display inside an aircraft used for targeting. The transparent leaf with the information about fuel, speed and height suggests a little a peek inside Hannes his head. On the illustration you see Hannes who is a pilot, mosquito and aircraft or helicopter all together. The, le the letter H on the airstrip normally indicates helicopter. Here it suggests that it's the initial of Hannes, his name. And therefore the spot looks like to be his own personal landing spot. Because of these small details, the illustration also becomes a little story. Well, this is technique. Uh, I suppose he's... Okay. Yeah, he's going too quick now, of course. Uh, this is uh, the other way around. The fly is about to be smashed with a fly sweater. like this, by turning the page. And here's a train station with a centipede as a train passing by. This is the hedgehog, which you saw earlier. The sign that exactly covers up the animal means, be careful, hedgehog. Back to the actual picture. This one was used for the book. The next pictures show the exploring of some possibilities, which are also done. It's just try to figure out which is the best situation to, for uh, illustration. This is the other one. 
Well, you might think he's not an illustrator. He's someone from a moving company putting stuff together that doesn't belong to each other. That could be true, but at the end, this method can deliver illustrations. Illustrations are often drawings or paintings and sometimes collage or a mix from these things. This method looks a little like a 3D collage. To show you how the method has been applied so far, I've made a schedule. Here's a schedule about three different books. The third book, with the sun, is still in progress. The first book, Animals are Everywhere, in fact means that in every common object might be an animal. This is an elephant made of electrical stuff. He is also an elephant, but quite different than the one before. It's from the second book, titled Nice Stories, which in my language also means nonsense. The third book in progress is titled Harakramala which is more or less the si similar to gosh or great galloping gosh. In Spanish, maybe it would be something like caramba. Anyway, it's a word you would say when you accidentally hit your own thumb with a hammer, but were brought up very well by your parents. <laughs> There have been used three different methods making these books. For the first book, the objects were made first, and then the stories were made up. It's an exciting way to extract a story by what the objects supply. And it, all, and it has all to do with imaginations and associate. In this case, typical characteristics of animals we used or the material where the animal was made of. This is a, about an elephant who likes to listen to trumpet music. His radio broke down and now he wants to repair it by, put it, by putting his trunk in a hole in the middle of the picture. Then he gets an electrical shock and starts trumpeting himself. <laughs> By the second book, the stories came first and then small and bigger objects were made to become illustrations later on. I suppose that this is the most common way of creating an illustration. To work this way around means you have to adapt to the atmosphere of the story, of course. And for instance, when necessary, create a surprised expression on a face. So I think it's more difficult than the first method, because you are more limited and pointed in a direction. Here you see a small hedgehog who is not allowed to come at a birthday party because the last time he did, he destroyed all the balloons just by walking around with his stings, you know. The third book is different again. This book is about trains, railways 
and a train station that is managed by animals. At the same time, objects and stories were developed. The objects were made and used to make beautiful pictures without being concerned to which story these pictures belong. Just keeping the stories somewhere in the back of the head. This to avoid a normal one-to-one -one situation of here's the story and this is the picture belonging to the story. Instead, this is trying to search a proper home for the pictures after they have been made, which is a tricky business, but also a playful test in order to create a sharp and surprising combination of the both of them. The experiment resulted in a difficult puzzle. And I have to admit that I have to make extra pictures to complete the puzzle to make things logical. But it is exciting because one can surprise himself. Reading the stories the illustrations suddenly reveal that they are usable in more than one situation. This illustration of a train station suggests a very early morning. Further on, it's quite neutral and different stories about railways or trains fit in. style. There are two items which are recognizable for the style and signature of all of these three books. Light in the illustration, which provides energy, vitality and atmosphere. And secondly, the structure of the illustrations assemblings using objects from simple towards complicated situations. To say something about these items, I'd like to show the same pictures several times so I can demonstrate the differences. Light is a constant important factor. At each illustration, a different angle and solution is thought of. So light is used in different ways. So sometimes it's almost used as painting something. Here, on this picture, the shadow accentuates a delicate careful situation. It looks as if the action is caught on a camera and that the animals have no idea of that they've been seen. Here the light is used to achieve an extrovert expression. Here I am, I'm not hiding, and there's no compromising with me. A very, a very sharp shadow somehow shows this is an unexpected situation. Because of the shadow, the figure on the left is actually used two times to show that he's surprised. It's some sort of extension of the figure.
Here, a spotlight was put on a rocket to focus and to create a mysterious scene. Important was the fact that one can look through the glass into the rocket, which is inviting. It's a bit the same as looking into an aquarium and become part of another small world. Here, reflection and half-transparent materials suggests a large train station hall. So one can almost imagine the echo of a broadcasted message about the trains. The figure here is positioned in the fog to create a desolate situation. He has to deal with everything by himself in a mechanical environment. So in each illustration the light has a major role. The atmosphere achieved by the light in the illustrations can be described, described as followed. Vulnerable, delicate, proud, self-confident, suddenly being busted, personal and confidential, formal and well organized, a programmed situation conducted by signs, signs which are in charge. The second item that is related to the style of these illustrations is the structure. Everything is assembled. What you see apparently are logical objects, despite the fact they consist out of material that normally doesn't supposed to be together. The illustrations show a range from simple towards complicated situations. It's about how you can suggest connections, how objects become characters and how things relate to each other and the environment. As you will see, this can vary from a few interventions in the first illustrations to the last illustration, which hides all kinds of meanings. So, the same series of six illustrations show a small evolution from simple towards complicated. Both of these animals, a buck and a hedgehog, exist out of three different parts of common objects. The bug was made from a plastic spoon, a part from a spectacle, and cake forks. The hedgehog was made of forks, a funnel and a wheel from a toy car, which became an eye. I wanted to show the vulnerable and touching side of them and create created a mini procession. 
So these common objects have actually become alive and show emotions. This bird was only made of spoons. I wanted to capture an exclusive grace in the picture, which included a logical appearance of the bird. So one would think, yes, this is a beautiful bird, instead of, no way, this, this is not a bird. Therefore, I chose a black background. A partly black printed transparent page in front of this illustration in the book only shows one spoon, the red one on the right. Yes, red one on the right. And suggests a magic trick that has to be performed in order to make this bird. The figure on the left, an unpleasant insect, is made of four different parts. The butterfly is made of five different parts. Normally, these materials, like plastic spoons, knives, a wall plug, and so on, do their job and further on are not important. Now, the parts became figures. It seems that they manage to suggest an interaction between each other. So, the empty space is filled with communication. A several number of parts were put together to make figures and a rocket. After that, they were combined. The illustration is about a secret. Therefore, I made an intimate dark setting. The picture tells a lot. A mole is explaining his secret plan to a frog. And in the center of the illustration is the subject they are talking about a strange rocket with a submarine entrance. The reader and spectator has the privilege to take a look inside the rocket and becomes part of the secret. The following illustration. I used all kinds of semi-transparent objects to create a modern looking hall with lots of space. The piece on the left, for instance, is a drying rack used for dishes. Further on, the doors of the studio were opened, opened up to let in the daylight. And I used my stainless steel working table and took advantage of the reflections. The important thing was to reach the point that I could say, yes, now it's becoming a station hall and we can believe in it. This is a complicated, rich picture. Like the picture before, all kinds of different parts were used. The railway shows musical notes. It's a fragment of a music piece by Aaron Copland, one of my favorite composers. The music piece is titled Ho Down. A hoedown is a short demonstrative dance where the new dancer tries to outnumber the previous dancer. 
or a musical performance, for example on violin, with a similar competition, competition element. In a way, the parts of my objects also make their demonstrative moves. They all act and trying to be the best in what they are. Support, supporting actors in an illustration. The first plan was to bring music throughout the whole book. Graphic, graphically, it would correspond, correspond nicely with locomotives and their moves. So at the end, one would have a complete music piece. But this would result in a lot of illustrations with more or less the same angle. Otherwise, you cannot read the notes. The short round chimney of the locomotive reflects the studio and the artist. In fact, it's a picture in the picture. Someone said, you have to Photoshop it and remove it. But I like it. It has become a small autograph. With, with a smoke machine, more depth was brought into the illustration. It was, in fact, a disco smoking machine I got for my birthday. <laughs> but only for this purpose. So I'm not a good dancer. So. The railway signs play a special part. All the railway signs have strange meanings. And there's a special page which explains them so one can read and see the book for a second time in an other, new perspective. The sign on the left, made of a black and dried coffee spoon, in my case means, stop, time for coffee. <laughs> the red one on the right is a routine greeting and says, hello, also, there are three different models of white plastic coffee spoons. Only two are visible in the illustration. I hope you can see them. One in front of the locomotive and one between the left sign and the locomotive. The first one means the word CHU in big letters. The second one, CHU in small letters. And the third one means PAPA. In some illustrations of this book, you can actually bring the train alive yourself by reading CHU CHU PAPA, CHU CHU PAPA, CHU CHU PAPA. So this is a quite complicated picture where a lot can be discovered. As you have seen in the book about railways and trains, railway signs play a special part. Railway signs seem to have their own exclusive language. It's a sort of in-between situation where visualizing and reading comes together because these signs represent words. In a playful way, the original meaning of those signs can be changed by giving them new unexpected meanings like stop, time for coffee. I became, it became a challenge for me also to look at words in a different way 
and to make assemblies out of words and use them in stories. As I told in the beginning, I'm from the Netherlands and I live in the northern part called Friesloon, where we speak Frisian. This minority language is spoken by 400,000 people. And this is the language in which I'm writing. While working on my book, I thought about the qualities of the Frisian language, its typical sounds, names, words, and so on. I made these characteristic elements important by lifting, lifting them out and use them. Hara Kramle, or Great Galloping Gosh, or Karamba, for instance, became the name of a train station. This way one discovers how lively and rich words can be. But I also played with words and tried to do something with it in the stories. What if I could manage to make a collection of words beginning with, let's say, the letter S and make a long sentence with it? A sentence of 16 words beginning with the letter S was made. In Frisian it goes like this. Na een peer slokje sinus saait zand zin sis zo zij sa cel solos jongens zonder zantig Chinese jongens. It's uh, it's good I have my own teeth so they won't come out. <laughs> Translated, it says, after a few sips of orange juice, San Sin says, say, would she be singing solo by herself without 70 Chinese singers? <laughs> so you can see that six S's of the total of 16 have disappeared. So this is very much connected to the Frisian. I wish a possible translator good luck replacing it. Also, the subject railways and trains delivers some starting points. A train conductor who travels back and forth can start speaking backwards now and then. This funny behavior can start quite innocent by just changing the beginning letter of some words. That would sound like this. Mood warning everybody, tickets please. <laughs> Gradually, things can get more worse, especially when the train driver pops up and replies saying words completely backwards. Ladies and gentlemen, the next stop will be Ogashik. <laughs> and as you can see, this is the word Chicago. Sometimes words also exist in another language and mean something completely different. In my hometown, there's a Chinese restaurant named Mai Wa. Mai Wa. I noticed that these two words coincidentally also exist in my language, Frisian. It's pronounced the same but just written a bit differently. I don't know what the Chinese meaning is of Maiwa, but I think it's a name. In Frisian it means with whom or who am I speaking to? So in Friesland, it is funny when you call up the re this restaurant and immediately get a reply in Frisian with a Chinese accent saying, who am I speaking to? <laughs> but fortunately, 
Maiwa doesn't mean wrong connection or something like that. Or uh, take a hike or, well, I don't know. Which would be, of course, very unpleasant when you have a restaurant, especially in crisis time. <laughs> this confusion can be found in more words that, that are Frisian, but have a Chinese ring about them. So everywhere there are possibilities to assemble with words. Since we are here with all kinds of nationalities and juggling with words in one, one's native language is already difficult, I will leave it by this example. Finally, we have the apple and the duster. These things are also typ a typical example of what can happen when something unexpected occurs. While working, the duster was cut in two in the assumption to use the front part. But when this was removed, a surprising volume remained on the other side. And that's how accidentally, accidentally, a hamster or guinea pig appeared. Only it had no eyes. That problem could be solved by eating an apple and remove the apple pits and glue them onto the volume. This hamster has no legs or ears and I never had any complaints about that when I showed them to children or when someone looked at the illustration in the book. And I suppose that's one of the magical things that appears in illustrating, that you can suggest things and believe in it. Thank you, Hotze, for the assistance and not interrupting me during my reading. <laughs> and thank you very much for your attention and mood warning. We laugh a lot yeah. with here with, with a, a lot. Um, you told us that your son was dyslexic. Yes. And you play a lot with words and with changing uh, places of wor of uh, letters and that. Yes. Uh, can you explain how your son ah. do with this? No. Um, the the changing of the letters and words is um, the evolution in, in my work. So this is the last book, for, uh, about the last book. Uh, when I was uh, writing for my son, he was much younger. Now he's 16, and at that time he was 11. So those stories were quite simple. Just every evening I uh, got uh, down to the laptop, and then it was just like uh, some sort of exercise uh, because he was going to bed, so you had to m make a short story very quickly. And of course that is uh, difficult, but it's, y you, you can exercise it. And, and it was uh, fun to do. So he was lying in bed and reading those uh, short stories in order to get a little better with uh, reading, yes. So you are now, you are... Uh joking about that, you are like naturally joking about the difficulties. Hmm. Um, well, I think uh, everything has uh, two sides and uh, uh, also for my, my objects, I, I, I try to unite uh, the opposites of, of uh, two things. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, Hotze, uh, to me is uh, 
also an answer and a question at the same time. And it is uh, some sort of um, going on carousel. Oh, sorry. So, you, of course, you can um, uh, give an answer, but that I think that's not interesting. You also have to deliver uh, a new question because there has to be some magic and, uh, in, in, in an illustration or in an object, something which you cannot explain entirely. Of course, it's nice to, see, to say and explain some things, but it's also nice that you cannot uh, explain something for 100%, because it not only have to, has to do with your mind, but also, of course, a lot with your emotions and uh, feelings, so. I want to ask you uh, how you find the way, using so beautiful way, using object in illustration. What uh, you, you remember the beginning and how it was? How, uh, uh, how, how you, you, you find the way? How I started? How you it start using object to illustration? It was, uh, I suppose, just an accident. Uh, <laughs> um, well, like I said, I've, I, uh, I made all kind of simple examples for children just to st st get them start working, which was uh, v v uh, big fun because children are uh, very open and they don't have a barrier, you know. Uh, for instance, if, if I see a package of something which maybe have a, a good shape, but it has a text on it. Uh, well, I or adults maybe could think, well, we can use it, but it, because it says um, uh, milk or something. But children don't don't mind; they just use it. So it's it's great to work with. Um, I just started uh, making simple examples, and um, then I thought, well, this is this is fun to do. So I made some more. And the first thought was um, making nice pictures of it to show to schools just to, because all, I have to uh, earn money and so. But uh, these examples became more and more and I, I, I made them less simple and more, I tried to make them more beautiful. And that was, um, at that point, I thought, well, maybe I can make a, a book of it. So I, I went to a small publisher and uh, asked him, and that's, that's how it uh, all started. And now I'm really crazy about making books. Uh, like I said, the turning of a page, it, to me, is, it, it is a, a move, a movement, which you can also use. Yeah, you, 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 you can make uh, an illustration, but you can do a lot more. Yeah? Like, like uh, an order, like I said, an order in what to show first and then. So, you can make a lot of uh, little surprises in a book. And uh, well, if you, if you want, you can see this uh, big, um, that one later on. Um, and, um, the third book, which is now uh, where I'm working on, I'm working on it for almost three years. Not constantly, of course, because you have to do other things to uh, earn money. But, um, yeah, I will try to make a masterpiece and uh, uh, try to uh, hide uh, lots of secrets so you can read the book over and over again. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, last week, a student asked me why in the children's books there are so many animals. Ah. Do you have an explanation? Or in, 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 the, you, in general or in, in general, my books? But I ask in your books. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I think um, animals are uh, really appealing for children. Um, because it's, yeah, it's a little out of the box, you know. Um, we people, more or less, uh, are the same. We have two arms and two legs and two ears, uh, I hope. Uh, and, uh, but animals, yeah. 
An elephant has a large trunk and, and a giraffe has an enormous neck, so that's, that's fascinating. So I can understand completely uh, why children are grabbed by animals. And of course animals have, uh, they all have their own uh, uh, noises, uh, which and it's, it's, it's really uh, fascinating. So yeah, I can understand it. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. It, um, well, I, I, I don't really uh, think about um, the subjects uh, very, very much. I'm just, um, I'm just like a bird laying an egg. And such a book is, that's my egg, you know? I just have to do it. A, a bird can't stop laying his egg, and the same, same with me. And everyone can see for, for himself what he thinks about uh, the egg. And there's no, no, not a description on it which says uh, uh, I'm this or I'm that. So. What is more fun, like finding pieces, putting them together, like seeing like they look like an animal or something, or finding the, the, the technical way to, to solve the problem? You, ah. might, you might have plastic and and metal and wood, <coughs> how to put them together? Just glue them or find screws? Yeah, usually glue, and uh, the te technical part is, um, is, 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 no, it's not so much fun, it's just a problem. Because uh, usually, um, for instance, with uh, the, the trains, you find one part which uh, gave you the, I the idea, well, this is a good part for a locomotive. But then you have to find maybe five or ten other parts. But you don't know what parts you have to find. So it's, it's an enorm enormous uh, expedition of finding the second part. And when you find the second part, it gives you an answer with, with which part you need uh, as a third part. It has to be a big part, or large, or high, or low. So, um, at the same time, you try to give your object, for instance a locomotive, the appearance of being a train that really can exist. So, it, it looks very easy. It, it looks easy because it, you could imagine such a train uh, riding by, driving by. But, uh, in my studio, which looks like a junkyard uh, hit by a tornado. You all find uh, junk all over the place and you just have to pick up something and try it. And then you know, no, this is not good. And you pick up another one, no, this is not good. So you can, you have to make maybe 100 or 200 uh, small decisions. And when you have uh, found your second or uh, third part, you are very happy. And, uh, well, then you continue with uh, the next part. But, but the gluing is, uh, well, no, it's, it's not fun. It's, it's, it's fun changing the identity of uh, something you know very well. And uh, I think the, uh, the important thing is that at the first time, uh, for instance, you see a hamster. But after that, you see maybe the pits of an apple or a duster. And then again, you can see the hamster again. And the last part is important for me. So as a child or adult, you can analyze the object or the illustration, but still believe in it after you did so. Uh, you are an illustrator, but as well you are a sculptor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm wondering what else do you do? Because you have two books, but I'm sure you, you do more yeah. things. And yeah. I've uh, started with the books um, in two, 2006. Um, I've, uh, my education was uh, art school and before that uh, a painter school uh, in more an industrial and decorative way. So painting uh, old-fashioned wall advertisements, very large, or uh, gilding, you know, or um, um, 
making wood imitations with a brush or marble imitations with brushes, um, window dressing, um, all kinds of uh, stuff. So um, I do uh, different things to earn money. So I give workshops. Uh, sometimes I make um, uh, uh, artworks um, in, 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 uh, in public just um, as, uh, assignments, yeah? so they asked me to, to, to create something. Um, so there are a, a lot of uh, different uh, things going on, and uh, that's why the last book is uh, going very slowly. Uh, <laughs> so uh, all the texts uh, are ready, and uh, pictures are uh, for 80% uh, ready. Uh, it's, they're all in this uh, map. But um, every time, uh, you have to do something to earn money because this only costs money. For instance, uh, m maybe you've noticed on the exhibition there's a small uh, bike, very small, and such a small bike with maybe five, only five parts, takes uh, one and a half day making. It's, it's, it's uh, long for just such a small bike, but uh, also, this bike has to be well, has to has to be uh, dynamic and uh, and convincing. So it takes a lot of time, um, but but I'm not complaining. <laughs> so you you like doing a lot of different things, or would you prefer mm. to do only? Sculptures and illustration. No, I, I uh, also exhibiting. Uh, I like very much. Mm, and um, well, I just I just have to do different uh, things, and it it's nice, but sometimes it's uh, difficult because uh, constantly you have to make a switch. Uh, if you, uh, for instance, uh, teach uh, children from four, four or five years, you have to to act in another way than uh, than you do something completely else. So. And uh, I suppose uh, women are much better at uh, those things than uh, than males. Yeah. Thank you. So congratulations, you all, uh, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much again, Mackil. Okay.